Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. We are happy to have you here. It's our last day at VBS. We know that you had a good week, but we have to say goodbye to you until Sunday. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You're gonna sing it without me now. Shine over real and hill. Let it shine over real and hill. Shine, shine, shine. Let it shine over real and hill. Let it shine over real and hill. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. What did you do to shine? So you share snacks very good. So that's one way to shine. Anybody else? Tell me how you shine. I saw lots of hands. Huh? You have to tell me what you did. What did you do to shine this week? You helped mommy clean up. You really did that? Very good. Anybody else? How did you shine? Tell me little one. And you do what? You hug your mommy? Alright, nice, you show some love. Tell me about you. How could you shine? What did you do to shine? Lots of folks who just show their hand a while ago. What did you do this week? Remember God's knows? And you can't lie, you can't make up something on this spot. So if you tell me shine, what did you do to shine? You? You prayed? Very good, and all of us remember we say this week. The first thing you do when you wake up is what? Run for the tablet? Yeah. Run in the fridge to see what's available to eat? Yeah. No. To see what's showing on TV? No. Take up a Nintendo game? No. What's the first thing you do? You? To who? God. God. You sure? Yes. Yes. Why do you have to pray to God first thing in the morning? Why? Thanking him for? Waking you up. Waking you up. What else? Ask God to look to you that in the night. Lord, look upon me when I'm sleeping. Protect me from danger and harm. What else do you pray to God for? Say that loud. To ask God, Lord, help me to come to church. Help me not to hate coming to church. Give me a passion for Sunday school, for going to church. Very good. Anybody else? Give me two more. What do you pray to God for, little one? Tell me something you pray to God for. Two more. To for keeping your auntie alive. Very good. For providing food. There are so many things we can give thanks for. And we enjoy so many but so many things each day. We can't be selfish. Who gave us all the things that we enjoy? So we need to thank him. You don't fall out of the sky. Who makes you breathe today? You're breathing. Everybody have hands, two hands, two feet. Anybody lost an eye yesterday? No. Everybody's okay. And in, in some parts of the world, there are people who need food, who don't have food. There are some people who don't have slippers to wear today. Not just Africans, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have people who are in need. Do you know that? And we play with our food, and sometimes we say, Mommy, I don't want a cheese today. Mommy, I want ham and, and, and I want sandwich. And we refuse what we are given. So we have to be more thoughtful and more thankful, okay? 
So we need to thank God. Everybody is listening? We need to thank God for the things that he has provided for us. And when somebody gives you something, how do you take it? If I give you this, what do you have to do to get it? Just say thank you, but I still have it. What do you have to do? You have to take it. So you would get it. Because if you say thank you, I still have it, right? Yeah. She don't have it yet. So God has given us something. We have learned listening and God has been given us something. And many pastors have been refusing it every day. Many people, even the children, he refused that. Anybody know what that thing that he's given us with? He has given us that thing, that long word. It's free, you don't have to pay for it. Salvation. Exactly. And what is your salvation was? What can you say salvation is? A gift, is it? Is a gift costly? Do you have to take a gift? No. 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 It's free, somebody gives you a gift. So you have to take it. So God is offering us salvation. And all we need to do is to accept it. Accept the Lord Jesus. He gave his only son. God gave his only son, Jesus, to die where? On the cross. Did he stay dead? No. no, he didn't say that. He rose from the dead three days later. And where is Jesus? Where is Jesus now? Heaven. heaven. Where is Jesus now? Heaven. Where is heaven? Open Where is heaven? Open if I take a plane, I can reach there? No. How to get to heaven? Die. How do I get to heaven? Somebody tell me. Die. 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 Miss me. You have to give your life to Christ, and then when you and when you die, you go to heaven. You have to give your life to Christ, so I don't throw myself up here and say, "God, take my life." No, you have to get baptized and go to church and listen to the Lord. But before you get baptized, what do you have to do? Repent. Who said it? What does that mean? It's a small word, but what does it mean? Ask God, oh, God, ask God for forgiveness. Are you saying? Repent. Repent. Tell on yourself. Say, Lord, I have done this bad thing. And you know what it is. I don't know. So when you're praying, you say, Lord, I want you to forgive me for... You put in the blank. Forgive me for... You know what it is. Is it lying? Is it stealing? Is it being rude to mommy? Is it watching dirty movies? Is it cursing? Is it fighting? All those things, if you know you're weak at, when you're praying, you ask God, Lord, please forgive me and help me to stop doing this. And I want it to come into my heart. Because if you never, if you never um, invite him in, he can't come. You have to invite him to come into your heart, right? So all that is repenting. You tell on yourself. You ready? Philippians 4.13, go.
Okay, all right, next person, real quick. Is in the Old Testament. Psalms is in the Old Testament. John is New Testament. We have the index to, to help you as well. Twenty seven. Show me twenty seven. Show me where it would have been then. Okay, go go. Fast, you found you found out that yourself. Go ahead, go. You know the last person. You know the person. All right, so the screen wins. Yes. He won. Yes. How many boxes? Sixteen. Small number sixteen. Show me point and show me. All right, good job. Hello, my name is Beverly Taylor. I'm the Children's Ministry Director of the Rillen Hill Church of the Nazarene. This year, VBS, we partner with the CEF, which is Child Evangelism Fellowship. They were in charge of the lessons where they were teaching the children about God, witnessing to them, which we have some children who accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. And we, the members of the Rillen Hill Church of the Nazarene, we were responsible for the craft with the children, which the children, you know, enjoyed a lot. We did different types of crafts, which we um, placed the children in their age group. We did um, paper crafts, we did um, with bottles, we did with tidy tissue, lollipop stick, and many other crafts. We started on Monday the 14th, and the first day we had about 38 children turning up. And Tuesday we had 62, Wednesday we had 52, Thursday we had 51, and today, Friday, we have right now 53 children. It was very good because they were really into the lessons and really into the, the crafts. They were um, answering up when Miss Akers you know, were teaching, asking questions, even with the games, they participated well. How do I get to heaven? Somebody tell me. Die! Die! Die. Miss me! You have to give your life to Christ and then when you and when you die you will go to heaven. My name is PJ Martin, I am 12 years old and I come from Rilland Hill. VBS was very fun and educational and I participated well and it was a lot of fun. We did crafts and the teachers were very kind and loving and every morning I, I was so excited to come because because the last time I did not get to come but today this year now I get to come and it was a lot of fun. Hi my name is Ethan Nira I come from Maryland Hill and I'm 10 years old. VBS was really fun for me because we got to do all these crafts and just came together, kind of like a big family. So I'm, so I'm glad that God, that God gave us all these days to come to VBS. Hi, my name is Brother Joseph. I'm from Rilland Hill. I am 11 years old and I enjoy the art and craft. We make umbrellas, fans, mouses out of cardboard. We make earrings, bracelets, and that's all. Hi, my name is Tia French. I am 15 years old. I am from Rilland Hill. And I came to DBS at the Nazarene Church, and I really did like it. It, is, it started from the 14th Monday to Friday the 18th. And I hope that 
the next CBS y'all can come and participate with us because we really did enjoy ourselves. We did crafts and we learned a lot of things. We learned how to do hair clips and today we are going to do bows and we did earrings and they were very fascinating and I liked them and I hope that y'all can come next time. Psalms 27 and verse 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 27 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Hello, my name is Jackie Lewis Aki. I am a representation from the Child Evangelism Fellowship. I am also the national coordinator here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And usually around this time we go to different churches and we assist with Vacation Bible School, five day clubs for churches especially who need help with their Bible clubs. And we come, we help with craft, we do Bible lessons, we do memory verses and even mission story and play games with the children. So we try to make it fun and interesting for them and assist the churches especially who need help. Really, Neil Nazarene, it was good. The teachers were helpful. The children were, were, were very um, good. Although you would still have a lot of them who would misbehave now and again, but we still try to teach them the word of God. And we give them that opportunity, this is important, to know Christ as their savior. Child Evangelism Fellowship, it's a nonprofit organization. It has been in St. Vincent for over 20 years, maybe close to 30 years. I just became the director last year. There were previous persons who worked with the organization then, but we help churches with training, churches who want training done, whether it's for Sunday school teachers, we do seminars, we do um, camps as well, we have retreats, we have different church-related activities, and one of our main activity that we have is good news clubs, Bible clubs within our primary schools because the age group that we deal with mainly are from 5 to 12 years old. So our ministry is mainly in the primary schools where we go and we have different Bible clubs with different schools in St. Vincent and the It doesn't matter what our needs are, 
oh God, but you said you will supply our need according to your riches this morning. Hallelujah. And I'd rather be a sunbeam for Jesus than be a sunbeam for man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give him some praise. Give him some praise this morning because he deserves it. He deserves all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a rainy day, but it is still the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I will not be preaching this morning. Today was really a special occasion planned for the children who participated in our DVBS. But due to the weather conditions, um, most of them are not here. But we will still go forward with our program. We, I just want to say a few words concerning our DVBS. Despite the challenges we, we had in terms of providing human resources, finance, materials, even the postponement, we were able after many years because of the impact of COVID to stage the DVBS. 2023 under the theme, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We had a total of about 62 kids coming out from kindergarten right up to teenagers. You need to put your hands together for them. This year's DDBS was made possible through a partnership between CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship, and the Rillen Hill Church of the Nazarene. We want to thank CEF for coming. Though not all the days, they made a tremendous difference in us staging our DVBS 2023. We want to particularly thank the ladies of the church who felt that we should do this. We should not postpone. Sister Chrislyn, could you stand? Sister Taylor, Ma, we had Sister Abraham, Sister Annette Abraham, and Sister Abraham Sr. chipping in. Who else am I missing? Sister Carlita, who is not here, she is not well under the weather, well, with the, talking with the flu. Sister Marilyn, yes, yes. Brother Ian, we call him Ian for Ian come half day. <laughs> Just kidding. Brother Ian, and you know they all chip in, cook food. They didn't just come to help, but they, they, they went into their resources, limited resources, and made a sacrifice to give, to be here and to give of their resources, prepare meals for the children. And we want to thank you for doing that. I challenge you, you know, and you, you rose to the challenge. I took the week off from work. I had some vacation owing to me, so I took the week off. So I was the errand boy. My role was to drive and pick up the kids and, you know, help do whatever they want me to do. But all in all, we had a wonderful DBS. Brother Kenton also came and covered it to broadcast it. And I'm satisfied that we have made an impact on the children of this community and beyond. Amen. When I, when I look, yes, you can clap. When I, when I look at, you know, the range of kids that we've had, as I said, it's from kindergarten right up to the youth. I actually was looking at the Lord was showing me our children's church. And if you have 60-something children, it means you need to take that serious. 
Amen? And they are serious. Day after day after day, they kept coming. And we as adults, we need to take them serious. And we need to go after them to ensure that they continue to be in the house of God. We invited them here this morning. I know the, the weather prevail against that. Most of them are not here. But we must not leave them until the next DPPS. I, I promised the church that we will launch our youth department in September. And we will do so. And I see these kids being a part of that. And we who are members of the community, we have to step out and do our part to make sure that we go after them and encourage them to bring them into the house of God to shape the next generation. Amen? To save the next generation. You know that our country is, is slipping down a slippery slope with crime and violence. You know many of our Young people are in prison for crimes. We, we can't save those. They are already gone into prison. I mean, for those who will come out and surrender, yes. But this generation that remains, we have to do something about it. Amen? We have to make time. We cannot be busy about our own life, about our own business, and forget God's business. God's business is the children, not just the adults. Sister Taylor said the children are coming, they are coming, they are coming. Look at that, turn around. Look at that, you see what I'm telling you? This is why I wanted to, to just say a few words to us this morning. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Boys and girls, we were just talking about you all, those of you who, who, who just come in. And it, it's all good. It's good to see you braving the weather and joining us this morning. Amen? So let me just wrap it up. I want all the kids to stand. All, wow. All the youths, all the children. Some of them say they're not kids, they're Wow, who else? You have a big one in the back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who come in? All right, let them come. We're going to pray for them. Hallelujah. So while, while they are coming, Let me say that we have a responsibility to invest in these children. Amen? Let us take a good look at them, remember their faces, remember their names. And I want all of us to, to make it our business to take responsibility for ensuring that they are in the house of God so that they can be exposed to the teachings of the Holy Bible, so that their lives can be shaped, so that they can be nurtured and developed, so that they can be given hope, so that they can be put on the path to a successful holy life. Amen? There's so much in this world, as I was saying before, many of, of them are in prison, youths from all over this nation. And there seems to be a cycle in, in this nation of, of crime and violence among our youth. We need, children you may sit, please. Seems like the others are coming, the whole army. Like they're coming off the mountain, so let's, let's sit and wait until they come. Amen? So, as I was saying, many of them are in prison because of crimes and violence. And we need to, to, it's a cycle, we need to break that cycle. 
this generation must not get into that trap. Are you see you see where I'm going with this? This generation of children must not be influenced by those spiritual forces. So we must break the cycle. It's not an easy job, but God is going to bless us for it. And not only is he going to bless us, he's going to give us all of the resources that we need to get the job done. These children are our responsibility. So let us pray for them. Let us encourage them. Let us make sure we do not take no for an answer. When we see the slacking, let us make sure we all go after them to get them in the house of God. If you have 60, 60 something children coming into the house of God, you know what that is going to do for the church? That's the next generation you're raising up. Amen? It means that the future will be bright. It means that you have people who will take over to carry on. But we have to invest in them. Hallelujah. They are still coming. Hallelujah. So, so I'm going to ask them to come to the altar now. All of the kids stand and come and stand in front of me. Good to have all of you. Brother Lenroy, Sister Shaman, prayer warriors, could you join me? We're going to pray for them. I want you to just anoint them, man of God. And let's pray for them. Hallelujah. Okay, the next thing I want us to do, I want to be obedient to the Spirit of God. I didn't plan any of this. I want us, the church, to stand behind them. I, the Lord just dropped that into my spirit. That they have, the church is too far away. Let the church feel involved. The Lord spoke to me concerning this. And what he said to me in prayer is that he has given us these children. It is up to us now. It is up to us now to take care of them. He has given them to us. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about these children? The future generation is, is in front of us. The future of Rillan, the future of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is in front of us. Young, innocent children beautiful boys and girls, teenagers in the midst. Let us stand with them. Hallelujah. Everybody, I see some people sitting. Those who are sitting, join us. Come. It's okay. You're part of this. Come, Sister Kara.
my weakness you are merciful. In my weakness you are merciful. in this community and through this DPBS by the power of your spirit you open the gate and you let them in many of us may, may not see it this way but God you've shown me in the spirit what you have done it is for us to receive them it is for us to nurture them it is for us to care for them to develop them to encourage them to teach them well the things of God. Teach them about morality and honesty and hard work and commitment, about good self-development, to teach them about the things of God, about holiness and who they are in Christ. So Father, we ask today that you will empower us with your Holy Spirit to get the job done. We pray for them, God, we claim them as, as our own. We claim them for your kingdom. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, God. We decree and declare that they are God's property this morning. We come against every stronghold, every obstacle, every hindrance that may be warring against them. And Father, we nullify them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who will lead us, who will guide us, who will direct us, who will empower us to teach, to minister to them. God, we pray that you will continue to keep them, that you will provide all of their needs, that you will speak to their hearts and change their hearts, that only you can do by the power of your spirit, let their hearts and their minds be turned towards God. Let their hunger and thirst after your righteousness for you said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. You call them because they are young and they are strong. And they can do exploit. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we seal them. We cover them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for sending them. And we thank you for the tools, the resources that you will give us to look after them. We bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, without any further ado, the privilege is mine to introduce our speaker for today. She is none other than Sister Christine John. Could you put your hands together and make her feel welcome? 
very hard working warrior for the kingdom. He stood up in all the heat for the whole week and taught with others. I saw the sweat running down, but she stood up. What was this? What was this slogan? Hey, hey, hey! No, they're not, do, they're not responding to me. So you have to show them how to do it. God bless you. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey, boys and girls! We're happy to see you in church this morning. Before I start, we're going to have the children. They're going to sing our theme song for us this morning. Let us give them a warm welcome.
you very much to the children, as Pastor Taylor said. Our theme for this week, shining your little light. Shining your little light. So this morning I'm just going to encourage the children and also us as adults. I'm going to read for you from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. And it reads, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we pray, O God, that this word will bring light and, Lord, that it will bring life. I pray, O God, that you will bless it, that it will find roots in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I'm going to encourage everyone that God can use anyone regardless of our age, status in society, or our family background. God will use you to shine in your generation. I'm going to highlight some of the children that were brave enough to shine for God in the Bible. The first one is the little servant girl in Naaman's house. That is found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. We understand that this girl was taken from her home to Babylon to work for Naaman's wife. So she was a little maid, a little slave. And while she was working there, Naaman had leprosy. She was only about 12 years old. I know some of you are 12 years old, you're feeling that you cannot do anything for God. You can shine for God. She had a strong faith in God. And because of her character, Naaman's wife trusted her and told her husband that the little girl said that he should go and speak to the man of God. Even though she was young and in a strange land, she was not afraid to speak about God's ability to heal Naaman. Because of her words, Naaman was obedient and he was healed. If she wasn't there to send him to the man of God, you know, he won't have been healed. And you know, sometimes you're at home and mommy's speaking about something, I want to give an idea to say, ah, mommy, I think you should try this or try that. And we are afraid to say, try this or try that because, you know, you don't want to get beat, you don't want to get licks or anything like that. Do not be afraid to speak obediently to your parents and give them good ideas and parents let us not stifle our children now to say you're young and you're that dying count because they are small sometimes they give us some brilliant ideas that we didn't even think about second child i'm going to speak about is king josiah he was about eight years old when he became king of israel yes eight years old let me see the hands of all those in here who are eight years old no eight year old in here okay but he was a very big one in the back he was only eight years old when he became king so he had to rule over a whole nation he was just a child and you know something his father was a very wicked king some of us come from homes where our families are not saved and we're saying, I can't do anything for God. I don't want to serve God because my mommy or my daddy, they are not saved. His father was a wicked king. And when Josiah, he was eight years old when he became king. But when he was 16 years old, he began to seek the Lord. So he was still a young person. And he sought counsel from a woman of God. She was a, prophecy, a prophetess. She encouraged him in the words of the Lord for blessings. Do not be afraid to speak to an adult, to seek counsel. If you're going through something and 
it seems a bit hard, it seems a bit off, you don't know what direction you should go. Do not be afraid to speak to an adult for guidance. And because of what the prophetess said to him, he was able to restore the house of the Lord. And Josiah, for the rest of his days, the people of Judah, they worshipped God because of this young man. He became king when he was a child. When he became a young man, he sought the Lord. You are never too young to be used by the, the Lord mightily. And if you are young, or as adults, you may be praying for a young person, don't doubt for one second that God is not going to do what you're asking for. In the midst of your growing years, God is going to do it for you. You have to shine wherever you go. Then we're going to speak of Samuel. Samuel was only a little boy, about the age of 12 again. He served God faithfully as a child, and when he was about 12 years old, God called him. So he never heard the voice of the Lord before, and he got scared. And he went to Eli because he was living with a man named Eli. Eli was a priest, so when he heard the call, he went to Eli, think that Eli was calling him. And Eli said, here, if he went to Eli, he said, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. He went three times. When he went back the third time, Eli realized, uh-huh, this must be God calling this child. And he said to him, when you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, thy servant is listening. Now, on Monday, I had a little opportunity to overhear a conversation with our young Zane in front here. When his grandmother came, she was talking about how he was preaching Sunday night. He was at home and he was preaching and he was on fire. And the teacher that was here, she came down, she said, that boy witnessed to me. He win me over, boy. He tell me how I was beautifully and wonderfully made. Don't make people tell you your nose big, you know. Don't make them tell you your nose big. And you have hope. You know what hope is? And she was telling her all these things. Hope is a good feeling. Listen, he's only eight years old. And he is encouraging somebody. So somebody has to encourage him. Amen. Our children might be young. They say, Mommy, I want to give my life to Christ. Hey, you're too young for that. No, they are not too young. God can use them no matter their age. So Eli said to him, go and ask the Lord to speak to you. And God told Samuel something to tell Eli. And you know, Samuel was not afraid to go and tell Eli. He went and he told Eli what the Lord said to him. And as he grew, the Lord used Samuel to give honor and glory to his name. He was a prophet. He was the last judge of Israel. And he rallied the nation to repent of their sins. Now, the final group of young people I'm going to speak about is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, we all know the story about these three boys. They went into the fire. They didn't obey the king or anything like that. But do you know that they were only teenagers? Anybody in here 16 years old or 17 years old? They were just teenagers like Leon and Rodriguez. But they stood up for God. You're going to school and you don't want to tell people I'm a Christian because you think they might laugh at you. Stand up for God. They didn't bow when the king said to bow to the idols because they loved the Lord. And they maintained their faith and they did, not, and they did whatever they had to do to follow the laws of Moses. They were in captive. They were in captivity. They were slaves. But they were not afraid. You know, sometimes you have to tell the truth. To get, even though you tell the truth, they're going to get licked. So some children, we twist the truth a little bit. Anybody ever do that? Did you do this thing? Did you teeth my milk and sugar? No, mommy, it's still mixed. Anybody ever tell any lie in here? And we understand that sin is anything that we think say or do that breaks God's law. So when we do the thing now, 
You want to blame somebody else. No, it wasn't me enough. It was my brother. But they did not blame it on anybody else. They did not say, you know what, we're going to bow because we're going to die. They stood up for God. They trusted God that he will deliver them. And they were confident in God that they flat out refused the order from the king. Because of their obedience to God and shining their light, even when the king threatened to kill them, they were able to make a change in all of Babylon. Even the king worshipped the true and living God. Because these young men say, you know what, I am not going to bow. And last week in VBS, we learned about Esther. She went boldly to the king. She said, if I perish, I perish. We learn of David. David said, you know what, you're going to be afraid of this uncircumcised Philistine. And he went out and he faced his giants. And we said that we will close our eyes, imagine our giants, and have our imaginary fling, and we're going to get rid of these giants in our lives so that we can shine our light for God. As you can see from these stories in the Bible, God can use you at any age to shine your light for him. You can make a difference in your homes, your schools, your communities, and even St. Vincent's and the Grenadines with the help of Almighty God. Parents and adults, let's not stifle their dreams. Let's not out their light. The light is their hope. Something that they're longing for, their dream. They say, I want to become the president. Shut him out. You don't like nothing else. This, that. We have to encourage the children. Study your book. You can be whatever you want to be. Right? Don't speak negative things into their lives. They speak positive things into their lives so that their lights can burn brighter. And don't tell them that they are too young. Don't say to them, you small when you get older. In the month of May, I came home, I brought home Osei their school had half. He said to me, he said, Mommy, a pastor was by my school. And he said, go home and tell your pastor you want to get baptized. So I said, so what are you saying to me? He said, Mommy, I want to get baptized. I said, why? He said, I believe that God died for me. And he rose again from the dead. And he told me all the reasons why he wants to be baptized. He said, Mommy, give me your phone. So I gave him my phone. I said, what are you going to do? I got to call Pastor. So he called Pastor Taylor, and they had a conversation. Pastor Taylor said, okay, you understand why you want to give your life to Christ. I will talk to your mommy and your daddy. And he got baptized on May 29th. It was a very emotional day for me. Because at the age of eight, me and studying that, I mean, I gave my life to Christ when I was 12 years old, but when I was 8, I was just a child. I'll do anything I say. Come, let me go carnival. I didn't like it at all. Say, come, let, come, let me go watch uh, mass. I can't talk. You see the mass. You come back home. That's it till next year again. But he never had those interests. He's only 8. He said, I want to do it. I didn't force him. I said, you know what? Go ahead. Zane is only eight years old. He said, you want to preach? Don't stifle him. If you want to preach, let him preach. Encourage him. Give him a Bible. Let him read it. Whatever the children wants to be, let us encourage them if it's something good. Okay? Encourage them. And children, I'm going to encourage you this morning to keep your lights shining for Jesus. When you go to school, I know some of you accepted if you were here. And with, last week at VBS, you gave your life to Christ. Don't be afraid. Just stand so that we can all see those who gave their lives to Christ. We can keep you on our bosoms and encourage you in the Lord. If you're not afraid, you did it. We have your names. We know who did it. But we want you to stand and make a public declaration that I want to serve the Lord. And let my light shine for Jesus. I see that we are afraid. Very good. 
Very good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats. They are not afraid to let their light shine before men that they may see their good works and glorify the Lord which is in heaven. That's my encouragement for this morning. I pray God's blessings over you and your families. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. Now we're going to learn Roy. We're not coming to an end yet. We have something else, something very important to do. This morning we are going to take into fellowship young Osai John. Come on, put your hands together for him. Where is he? Come. I want his mom and dad to stand with him. Stand in front of me down here. Come, we're not down. We're not down. Right, turn around, look at Pastor. Right. Stand up in the center. Whole family is standing with you. Amen? He's very serious about serving the Lord. Boys and girls, you see how serious Osai is? He's already playing drums in the church. Many of you have talents. And God wants to use you as well. So God has a plan for you as you continue to serve God and totally surrender to Him. God is going to use you all mightily. Today we are going to take into fellowship young Sai John. He's only eight years old. Nine? I thought you were six. Or you reach nine. A boy. Dearly beloved, the privileges and blessings that we have in association together in the Church of Jesus Christ are very sacred and precious. There is in it such hallowed fellowship as cannot otherwise be known. There is such helpfulness with brotherly watch, care and counsel can be found only in the church. There is the godly care of pastors with the teachings of the word and the helpful inspiration of social worship. And there is cooperation in service, accomplishing that which cannot otherwise be done. The doctrines upon which the church rests as essential to Christian experience a brief. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We especially emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ and the personality of the Holy Spirit. We also believe that human beings are born in sin, that they need the work of forgiveness through Jesus Christ and the new birth by the Holy Spirit, that subsequent to this, there is the deeper work of heart cleansing or entire sanctification through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and that to each of these works of grace, the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe that our Lord will return, the dead shall be raised, and that all shall come to final judgment with its reward and punishment. Sai, listen to me. Do you heartily believe these truths? If so, answer, I do. 
Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you realize that He saves you now? Respond, I do. Desiring to unite with the Church of the Nazarene, do you covenant to give yourself to the fellowship and work of God in connection with it as set forth in the covenant of Christian character and the covenant of Christian conduct to the Church of the Nazarene? Will you endeavor in every way to glorify God by a humble walk, godly conversation, and holy service? By devotedly giving of your means, by faithful attendance upon the means of grace and abstaining from all evil, will you seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord? Sai, John Jr., if so, respond, I will. I welcome you into, into this church to its sacred fellowship, responsibilities, and privileges. May the great head of the church, Jesus Christ, bless and keep you and enable you to be faithful in all good works, that your life and witness may be effective in leading others to Christ. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of this church to welcome you into our membership. We trust that we will be a source of encouragement and strength to you and that you in turn will be a source of blessing to others. May the Lord richly bless you in the salvation of souls and in advancement of his kingdom. I welcome you into the Rayland Hill Church of the Nazarene. Turn around and face congregation. Everybody out, stretch your hands and just put your hands together. Before, before I ask you to come and, and, and give him the right hand of fellowship, I'm going to pray over the family. So just outstretch your hands to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this family that you have given to us. We thank you for their loyalty and commitment the hard work and dedication to this ministry, to a life that is pleasing to you. We know that there are many challenges that they have to grapple with every day, to deal with their own, their own needs, but still that they find the time, God, for this ministry. They find the time, they make the time sacrificially to do your work. We know that this will not go unrewarded. We know that you will bless them for this. Father, today we pray for them. We pray especially for Osai. His heart is in the right place. We pray, O oh God, that you will keep your hands upon him, and strengthen him, continue to guide and direct him by the power of your Spirit. Order his steps, Lord, that he may continue to walk in paths of righteousness and walk upright before you. Father, we pray that you will surround him with your guardian angels, surround his family, and continue, God, to provide, to open doors, to make a way where there seems to be no way concerning their need. Continue to use them mightily for your honor and glory. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name and everybody say, Amen. Amen. I'm now going to ask you to come and receive them as members into the church. And let's, let's come from, from this side. So everybody will go rather than walking and clashing into each other. So I will take those persons on, on this side first. 
Boys and girls, you are part of it too, okay? Musicians. Yeah. 